Well, hello! This is Wizard Foo's Hologram coming at you with another development highlights video in the Low Dragger series. Today, I'll be talking about main.cpp and some of the more um, application specific and main specific stuff that gets the, the game bootstrapped and going. Uh, so I'm going to jump right into some code and show you some highlights here. Um, and my point here in some of these first um, episodes of going through the highlights is to show you what I've done so far. I've actually been developing this game for a couple months now. So I'm kind of going back and showing you some of the highlights of what's already been done before I can get in the daily habit of sharing the highlights of what I did that day. So for now, we're kind of sifting through the past and eventually we will be up to the current moment. So here we go. Um, one of the points of Kitfu was to create a game wrapper layer that compiles as fast as C and is a wrapper layer that I can switch out different engines at, at will. So for now, I'm building this game with Coco's 2DX's engine. However, I want to switch eventually to Double Eleven, my publisher's engine, so that this game can run on console and all that. Um, so, so anyways, I can pivot different game engines underneath the hood, and in essence, Kitfu would be everything in the 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 header files would remain constant, and switching the game engine would simply just be changing the C plus plus files. So. Here's the main.cpp. It, uh, it well, let's let's break down of what some of the things that uh, the main main namespaces of Kitfu. There's the app namespace, which deals with application stuff. There is the platform namespace, which has to do with platform specific stuff. and some platform specific defines. Then there is the view namespace, which uh, basically sets up the window or the full screen view and has functions specific to that. And you'll notice that all these are namespaces, not classes. And that just helps it, first of all, to be extended quite easily. So I can, in a different header file or a different C++ file, I can extend this namespace and add stuff to it. Even just for a single source file, I could add stuff to this namespace and no other source file would need to know about it. Super cool. I love namespaces versus the other way you could do this is you could create a class and maybe even make this class so that um, it had no constructor, stuff like that. Uh, but no, there's no need to do that if you just use a simple namespace. And there's a lot of power to namespaces as well. And then all the private implementation specific details are left out of all these headers as well. You notice there's not a single variable mentioned in this header file. It's all just functions. Um, what that allows it to do is just to keep all of the implementation specific stuff private in the source file not in the header because often things in the source file will change and this causes a recompile if you put stuff like that in the header so it's best to in my opinion to not put to put as little as possible into header files keep it private so we talked about view we talked about app we talked about platform uh, is there anything else okay there's log that should be mentioned that's the logger basically it log stuff out so you can put stuff out to a text file or to your console like little debugging strings and stuff like that um well hooks is also a cool one to mention we should mention this hooks are basically uh functions that you can push into a certain um a certain hook we'll, we'll talk about this again in a second we'll get back to hooks but hooks are pretty cool um, yeah, okay, so let's jump back into, 
jump back here into the source file and show you what I'm talking about. So it, in the main .cpp, it constructs the platform and then creates a view configuration. So it sets the design resolution to 420 by 240. Um, it sets the maximum design resolution to 420 by 315 and the uh, max ratio and the scale factor. Uh, what the design resolution is, is it's basically just what the intended resolution is for this game. And then the maximum de design resolution is the maximum that that design resolution can go up to. So my solution to different uh, screen sizes is basically to keep the width always the same and then adjust the height based on that particular computers uh, or consoles or whatever's that displays um, that displays ratio basically just apply that displays ratio keeping the width the same to construct the the height so it sets that up and it also sets up some uh, options for the file system. Um, once uh, once I get this game all finished, uh, I will actually put all the assets into a zip file. Right now, they'll just be in the assets folder, but eventually, that's all set up. That's that's basically set up for future reference. Um, and then it's also got some search paths. So within the assets folder, there's a data folder, textures folder, models, things like that. So if I wanted to load a model called uh, mail idle zero dot box um, that would I wouldn't have to type oh I want to load assets models mail it's just all I have to put is mail idle box uh, so anyways and then the input sets the maximum number of players and then here's where we we'll get back to the point of today's uh, talk is about the app that's the main, the main thing that can that handles the application and things like that. So app construct constructs the application, and then there's a file called systems which constructs all of the different systems, and then it runs the app. And when it's done running the app, it's done. That's why it returns whatever value that app run. So uh, let's go to app construct. We'll check that out. So yeah, here's the app namespace again. Um, it's got a construct method. It's got methods to get the name, version, revision. It's got a function to run the app. It's also got a function to exit if need be at an early point. You can exit. Um, there's a function to check if it's a duplicate process, which does nothing at the current point. And there's also a node for the parent. Um, so the main application basically has a node, uh, which which nodes are things that it can be objects that are drawn on the screen of all kinds and then there's some hooks so we'll talk about hooks here at the end of the video but uh, there's an on launch hook on background hook on foreground hook and an on exit hook so let's go into app.cpp we'll take a look at what this contains let's go down to uh, here here's where the app is constructed right passing in the number of arguments on the command line and also all the arguments on the command line so we can figure out what app, what directory this application's in. That happens here in file construct. So basically it goes through and says, oh, it checks its sanity and determines if it's okay. And e each one of these things that it further constructs, it checks if it's okay. And then if it is okay, it proceeds further. So basically if anything, if any one of these systems bails in its construction, it can bail from the overall construction and return false and then the application won't continue any further. So it constructs the file system and basically passing in argv allows it to determine what directory it's in and set up the file system that way. Constructs the logging, um, constructs Cocos 2 ds application. Um, and once again, yeah, if I were to swap in a different game engine, this bit would be a little bit, actually both of these little bits here, these are kind of like engine specific bits. But once again, they're nice and tight inside a CPP file, so that can be changed later if need be. Um, and it constructs the save file system, the view, the input, and of course, the all-important tick, 
always make sure to separate your animation tick from your tick tick so that when your game frame rate tanks your game gameplay doesn't tank okay so there's that and then when it runs the application it just it just calls coco studies run and then once it's done running it deconstructs the app and returns its value Deconstructing the app is pretty simple. Just calls some of it more of its hooks and deletes its Coco Studio app. And let's talk about hooks now. This is a fun thing. Hooks are basically just callbacks. They're just things that can happen, functions that can be called when something else happens. So, um, and they're all just, they're, the, the definition of a hook is right here. This is just a function pointer that takes no arguments and returns nothing. Keeping it simple that way. Um, if you want to add a hook, you can add a hook in each one of the hooks is basically part of a chain and you give it a function um, which is, is the default hook basically and that's how it references where to hook, what chain to install that hook into. So let's go back and look at um, app. It installed a few hooks itself. Here's one. Um, when, at, when the app is constructed, it pushes back a hook for app on launch to call this app underscore underscore on launch function in here. So this is the basically the, the function that gives it where to install the hook. And this is what it's going to call when this particular hook needs to be called and everything in its chain. So basically, these functions are like an identifier. And these are the things that need to be called when that identifier is ready. So it's a pretty simple thing as far as the hooks go and it allows allows a, a pretty simple system check out how check out how clean this header file is doesn't include any other header files doesn't need to call I could have I could have made this the type def for hooks I could have made this a standard function from the STL and that uh, I think the added bonus there would be that I would be able to pass in um, lambda functions but I've gotten away with not with a with a cleaner header file here simpler to compile um, and that basically makes it so um, it compiles faster and we don't need as much header bloat going on. So the cost is that I can't pass in lambdas. However, it's pretty simple to go and create these hooks. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's basically it. That's the main.cpp file, how it constructs everything. And Anything else worth mentioning here? We've looked at what kind of what we're given an overview of kind of what app is and the main.cpp file. And that's kind of all I intended for this video. So yeah, there you go. I'll come back each year with another episode soon and talk about some more things in KitFu. And pretty soon we'll be all caught up and I'll be talking about what I'm doing right now. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.